Good evening, guys, and welcome to Let's Talk Magic. Sorry about that. This is episode number 11, and we have a kababayan to be featured for tonight's, uh, for tonight's episode. Sorry about that. First of all, magandang gabi po sa inyo lahat. And again, it is Let's Talk Magic. We're in. We're going to go talk about magic for episode number 11. By the way, uh, first of all, again, my name is Chubster. Don't forget to share the stream. And of course, don't forget to follow us on our official Facebook page, Chubster Flores Productions. And of course, all past episodes will be uh, available for viewing at our official YouTube channel, Chubster Flores Productions. Well, kamusta ko kayo lahat dyan? It's uh, May 1st, Labor Day here in the Philippines. And to all of you back uh, out there, uh, thank you very much for joining in. And ano ba? Ano bang news ngayon? No, medyo na-extend na yung ating... Uh, Curfew for today, our, our curfew right now is, of course, 10 p.m. to uh, 5 a.m. Let me just wear my binoculars so I can see the comments that will be coming in or popping in over here. Yeah. And wait. Is it okay? Wait lang, huh? Sorry about that. Okay. Wait a minute. My bad. My bad. My bad. Okay. Wait. I'm getting all up now. Yun. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. Okay. So... Uh, again, don't forget to share the stream. This is episode number 11. Again, it's Chubster here. I'll be featuring one of our Kababayans who uh, is, will be broadcasting all the way from NG or New Jersey. So, wait a minute. Let me just see. Okay. Sorry if I'm having uh, lots of distractions right now. It's my fault. But anyway, again, Darren and the boss, Rani Rimundo, is uh, joining us. I mean, uh, listening to our broadcast now. Magandang gabi sa iyo, boss, and thank you very much for joining us at tonight's uh, broadcast. And of course, good evening to Tony Bellon. Okay, guys, uh, before we start or before I formally start the program, uh, ano ba nangyari this past few weeks? Okay, uh, some of our magician friends were uh, victimized by fire. So what we did was we was able to uh, come up with uh, some donations to some of our magician's friend, magician friends who were victimized by a huge fire somewhere in Malabon. So guys, antay antay lang. Uh, help is coming. And of course, I would like to also uh, pray for a speedy and quick recovery to one of the, our uh, prestigiator, prestigiator friend, Mr. Uh, Master Dem, who will be uh, undergoing the knife uh, come Tuesday. Uh, speedy recovery, Master Dem, and uh, I'll be praying for your full recovery and quick healing. Pagaling ka parate. And of course, miss ka na ng prestigitators. And of course, I all miss the prestigitators because we haven't seen each other for more than a year now. So what else, what else, what else? Guys, if you want to have a, make, uh, if you want to have some shout outs, just uh, type it in at the comment box and I'll be happy to read it for you guys. And ano pa ba? Uh, before we continue, I would like to... Uh, do some announcements first. First of all, I would like to put in this poster over here. Yeah. Congratulations to Professor James Nervaez, the winner of the online magic competition or online international magic competition hosted by IBM Ring 279 Bangladesh Ring. So once again, congratulations to the grand champion from the month of April. And for those who'd like to join this competition, you may get in touch with Mr. James Cuevas of the Inner Magic Lab. And here are the rules. So number one, you can, should submit videos of less than five minutes, as many uh, items that you could fit in five minutes, maybe as many magic items or routines that you can fit in five minutes. Rule number two, uh, okay, your age should be 14 years old or an up. So okay. Music should uh, be in their own. No unauthorized music or is allowed. And number four, for close-up magic, magician should uh, face should be visible once. And of course, six and so on and so forth. Again, these are being judged by uh, international magicians from uh, in, uh, from uh, Bangladesh and of course, a Filipino magician as well. So once again, if you want to join this competition, interna online international magic competition hosted by IBM Ring 279 Bangladesh Ring, please get in touch with James Cuevas. You can follow him at his Facebook page, James Cuevas. Of course, our good friends from MAGFI, where the Magicians Foundation Incorporated will be having this one. Magic Lecture presented by IBM Ring 322. Online Magic Lecture by Ju Yong Lee. The owner of JL Magic himself will be lecturing for MAGFI. That will be this coming Monday, 3 p.m. 9 p.m. This will be available via Zoom. And although it says they're exclusive for MAGFI members, for a minimum fee of 100 pesos, you are you can join in and watch 
Mr. Ju Yong Lee's lecture, the owner of JL Magic Shop. For sure, he will be presenting lots of magic items from JL exclusive, JL exclusives. And who knows, he might also give out some nice discounts for you out there, okay? Aside from that online magic lecture by Ju Yong Lee, we also have from Magfi. The Golden Hair Close-Up Magic Competition Online Edition happening on May 10. That's another Monday at 9 p.m. live via Zoom. For those who would like to watch this competition for a minimal fee of 100 pesos, you can enjoy all the competitors and all the competition. I mean, all the contestants uh, out there will be joining this competition. I'm getting all mixed up now. Sorry about that. So just get in touch with the MAGPRI president and secretary at the following numbers listed below. So once again, this is MAGFIS. Online Magic Competition Golden Hair Edition. Another, by the way, MAGFI, the month of, sorry, let me just take it out for a while. The month of May is, of course, MAGFI's anniversary is uh, on May. So that by the whole, that's why the whole month of May, MAGFI will be having scheduled uh, happenings from the first week of May to the last week of May. So, First week, it was Ju Yong Lee's lecture. Second week, it was the competition. Third week, we have, well, this one. Talk about Magfi in celebration of Magfi's 31st anniversary online show. So this will be uh, uh, an interview show featuring uh, the pioneers of Magfi, the one who, the, uh, the founders of Magfi, and of course, maybe some of the off past officers and members of Magfi. This will be live via Facebook. And uh, aside from that, we also have on May 24th will be Magfi's anniversary show. It's Magfi's 31st anniversary happening on May 24. So once again, please watch out for that Magfi's 31st anniversary show happening over Facebook Live, March 24, 9 p.m. And finally, dami nito, ah, another one from Magfi. Yun! Last week of May, May 31st, they'll be having online magic lecture once again, this time featuring Magic Mike Applegate on May 31st at 8 p.m. live via Zoom. Again, for those who would like to watch the lecture for a minimal fee of 100 pesos, you can now watch and join us for the Zoom event, MagFees. So guys, uh, those are the MagFees. Uh, how should I say this? Those are MagFees online events. So please, for the whole month of uh, May, don't forget to join us every Monday. Sorry about that if I'm looking on this side. My bad, my bad, my bad. Okay. Yun. And aside from that, my good friend, Wan Lu, will be having, of course, a special edition, maybe uh, maybe the old songs with Nicolo. So this will be Nicolo and Wan Lu. You can watch this free over his Facebook page, Wan Lu Lunaria or Wan Lu and his puppets. So this will be on May 2nd. That's tomorrow at 10 a.m. So kids, ask your moms and dads to wake you up early so you can watch Wanlu and Nicola's online show. It's maybe the old songs we're in. Nicola will be singing together with my good friend Wanlu. And of course, the following week after that, next Saturday, May 8th, Wanlu will also be having another show. It's called One Big Heart. Now, uh, if you want to know more about this show, I think there's a minimal fee if you're going to go watch this show. Just get in touch with Wanlu at uh, his official Facebook page, Wanlu Lunaria or Wanlu and his puppets. Yan. Dami, eh? <laughs> and finally, our good friends from the Inner Magic Lab or IMC will be having a lecture on May the 12th. I think that's a Wednesday, 8, 9, 10. Wait, 8, 9, 10. Oh, yeah, it's a Wednesday. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's a Wednesday featuring the Jeff Evan Lecture. It is exclusive for IMC member, I think. So IMC members, please uh, check this out and mark your calendars. May the 12, 20, and 21 at 9 p.m. IMC exclusive presents Jeff Evans or Evans Lecture. Ooh, for the first time, and dami natin plugging ngayon. Huh? But anyway, next time, yeah, you have to pay. Yeah? I'm just joking. Anyway, again, this is Let's Talk Magic. This is episode number 11. Thank you very much for watching and joining us for tonight's uh, uh, broadcast. Once again, in a short while, I'll be introducing to you our good, my good friend. Well, I hope he considered me as a good friend. <laughs> well, actually, it's a, uh, my, our, our, our fellow Kababayan. Uh, I'll, let, I'll tell you more about him later on. But anyway, uh, what else? What else? Okay. Let's go to our... Uh, 
partners for bringing this uh, broadcast possible. Once again, here you go. Philippine Magic Scene. For the latest news and updates on Philippine Magic, don't forget to log on their Facebook page, Philippine Magic Scenes. Once again, Philippine Magic Scene for the latest news and updates on Philippine Magic. Lasco Home Securities and uh, some security and automation. We make high quality automation affordable for every Filipino. Lasco Home Security and Automation only available at Lazada. Check out their Lazada on sale this coming May 5. For the best mommy and choco combo in Metro Manila, it's Mamun Look Restaurant serving the Filipino period since 1920. You can uh, visit their store at 408 Quezon Avenue, Quezon City, and they are also available by your favorite delivery apps. The Movers of Philippine Magic, The Prestigitators. You can visit their website at www.theprestigitators.com and Facebook page, The Prestigitators. And finally, VV Magic Shop, serving the needs of professional magicians and hobbyists. You can check out their Lazada and Shopee pages for the latest magic and, of course, the latest products in magic. Okay, that's DV Magic Shop. And finally, so we can start with the broadcast already, we have our birthday greetings. For those who celebrated their birthday this week, well, here you go, guys. Check it out. It's birthday greeting time. So, uh, it's birthday greeting time to all my good friends. First of all, here we go. DJT or Diamond Jim Tyler, happy, happy birthday. He celebrated his birthday last April 25th. IMC member Ben Rodas, also happy birthday to you, April 25th as well. Our Paul Wilson, celebrated is also his birthday on uh, April 25th, our second lecturer for the Press Theaters. Our good friend Takuyaki Guy, Carl Kion, happy birthday to you, my friend. Who else? Who else? Okay, our good friend from Hong Kong, Alan Wong, happy birthday, my friend. Another friend of mine, Gary Bartlett, happy, happy birthday to you, my friend. And of course, last but not the least, our first lecturer from the Presidentators, Bond Lee. Happy, happy birthday once again to all our good friends. Happy, happy birthday to you. And thank you very much for uh, being friends of mine for the past year. If you can st still consider me as a friend. But anyway, now enough with this one. Okay, guys. Actually, I have some. I have a surprise aside from my special guest. But my guest for tonight is a member of the prestigious Magic Circle in London, with the designation of Associate of the Inner Magic Circle with Silver Star. Ladies and gentlemen, our fellow Kababayan, let's talk magic with the one and only Vincent Mendoza. <laughs> Vincent, good evening and uh, good morning to you back there. Hello, everybody. Kamusta po lahat? <laughs> Oy, sige. Hindi ako nag-nosebleed. <laughs> what is, you mentioned that, sabi mo, hindi ka naman sanay mag-Tagalog, but you still know your, your way, yeah? I mean, you still I, know I your can, language. I can eh? still speak. When when I uh, when people ask me, I tell them I have about a, a sixth grade level Tagalog. Uh, you know, pero uh, when, when it's malalim na, I, it's very difficult for me. <laughs> oh, so, uh, by the way, First of all, thank you very much for joining me. It's a pleasure to have you here. I know you're very, very busy. Uh, I know you still have work. I don't know if you were you took a leave or not absent, ka, but again, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Yeah, and I'm very honored to be here. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, I'd like to uh, do a shout or a special mention to our good friend, Robert Laru or Bob Laru. My app and Bengi can uh, Pampanga. Actually, he's... Uh, magician who used to uh, reside in Boulder, Colorado, but right now uh, is uh, presently uh, residing in uh, Pampanga. So again, Bob, maraming maraming salamat. And of course, yes, I know! Papanigin ko ato. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? Hindi lang ito yung guest ko ngayon. Actually, I have a good friend uh, who will be uh, joining us. So let's all welcome him. Ladies and gentlemen, the boss of Philippine Magic, Mr. Madhouse himself, Ronnie Raymond is in the house. Ronnie, good evening. Boss, Ayun, how's it going? Good evening. You know, alam mo, I, I, can't, I can't really stay long because uh, I, have, I have something here. But yeah. hindi ko pwede palampasin. I will not let this go by without seeing <laughs> my friend 
Vince, it's been, it has like been so long. Yeah, it's been so long. Has it been I, 10 years? A, a at least. Or maybe it's, it's been longer. I think we saw each other last time, 2008, 2009. 2008, 2000. Yeah. Can't be 2009. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah, had yeah. so much fun, yeah. didn't we, huh? Yeah, we had a great time. Yeah. That was, that and was fun. And let me tell you this. You, I love you. You lost weight, buddy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I had to. The doctor was like, yeah, it's time. So <laughs> good for Thank you, Ronnie. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. you look, I wasn't talking to you, Chubb. <laughs> <I thought you're... laughs> no, you look you look great. You look great. Good. And yeah. uh, fantastic memories in Vegas. And uh yeah. wonderful, wonderful. You know, there was this one th this one bit that you shared with me, and I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. You have the best, the best, the ultimate version of the gypsy string. <laughs> yeah. Remember that touch? Yes. That Vince yes. Mendoza touch? Yes. yes. Oh, that killed, that killed many yeah. magicians. <laughs> it, it, yeah. I, 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 yeah. It, it, I ended up calling the trick uh, string theory and, uh, it, uh, it was the first thing. It's actually been released through through Murphy's. Oh man! Well, no, no not 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 to worry, not to worry, because okay. the critics absolutely hated it. <laughs> Why? Isn't that, a, it, it, isn't that a blessing? Yes, the, uh, they they hated it because they said it was too hard to do. But for 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 me, the the final product. It, uh, Rada, you remember what it looked like at the end. Oh yeah. Yeah. So for that for that ending, I, I was willing to work extra hard to 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 achieve that. But uh apparently, yeah, everybody that reviewed it said it was impossible to do. But I was like, I, I showed you exactly step by step how to do it, but they said I it was know. impossible. <laughs> I, I don't I don't get it. I don't get it why they said it was impossible to do. <laughs> because I've been doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it yeah. is a real worker. You know? Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's the name of that? No, what's the name of that effect again? And what, what's the name of that effect again? Well, I, well, I call it effect? string theory. Ah, okay, string theory. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, but, anyway, uh, anyway, hey Vince, yeah. how's it, how's it going there? Uh, how you guys are dealing with the pandemic? Uh, it's it's going pretty well, actually. Uh, I I I contracted COVID very earlier on. Oh, you did. Yeah. Yeah, when when it when it for last April, uh, but uh, luckily my my uh, case of it was was fairly mild, so uh, I got through it quickly, and then I've been vaccinated since they, they've had it. Uh, so I, I've been I've been holding up okay. Oh, yeah. That's wonderful. That's yeah. wonderful. That's all I need to know. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'll be watching, and uh, I just won't let this pass without me <laughs> dropping by and say hello to you. And I'm just, I'm just happy you look, you look healthy, healthier than ever, and uh, <laughs> you. you are truly one of the most magical people I've met in my life. Oh, I appreciate that. You and I, I feel the same way, boss. You. <laughs> oh man, you're amazing. Yeah. Well, God bless you. God willing, we will yeah. see each other again, absolutely, in, uh, in the next convention after this is over. Yes. So keep on rocking, and uh, good to see you, Vince. You too. Keep singing, boss. <laughs> See you, Kabayan. God bless yeah. you. Bye, yeah, job story. Bye, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, it's the boss of Philippine Magic, the one and only r, &R Ronnie Raimundo. Thank you very much, that, boss, for uh, yeah. dropping by. That was a nice surprise there. That was a nice surprise, Jeff. Sir. And actually, <laughs> dapat mamaya ko pa si isa sampa. The, the problem is, uh, he's, uh, oh, I just bought him on something. Eh. Yeah, so, yes. Yeah, yeah. Sige, I'll put you a, a bit earlier. Anyway, I hope you like that one. And, uh, oh, yeah. Walang problema. That was great. Thank you. Kulang na lang. Kulang na lang. Mag-embrace kayo kung nakita kayo. Eh, no? <laughs> Group Inuman hug. Ulit. Inuman ulit. <laughs> so, kayo lang yun kasi, I, I, you know what? I don't drink, huh? Oh. So, okay. it's, it's not my style. Eh. Every time I go to, <laughs> if my friends are going to be inviting me over, yeah. ladies drink ako parate. <laughs> that, that's okay. Nothing that, wrong with that. Yeah. I usually drink beer, tapos yung isang bote, puro ay isang baso, po, it's full of ice and a bit of beer. But they told me, yeah. just drink water instead, not beer anymore. That's okay. <laughs> but anyway, Vince, yun, uh, yeah. I, I didn't know that you contracted COVID uh, last year, April, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, is it asymptomatic only or what? Uh, uh, for me, the symptoms were, were very mild. 
Um, you know, I, I did have the shortness of breath uh, and everything tasted, not that I lost uh, taste, but everything tasted metallic. It was just, yeah, it was just like this weird. Smell? Um, I, I, I don't remember getting loss of smell. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think that was part of it. But I was weak. I was tired. Um, uh, you know, the, the, I would have fevers that would that would run high, and then it would break, and then you know back. You know, but yeah. So it, it lasted for for almost like two weeks, but then it cleared up. Thank goodness. Nice to know that, man. And uh, again, thank you very much for uh, sharing that to us. And yeah. alam mo dito kasi maraming ano, Some of the guys don't believe that there's really COVID. It's well, it's it, it's unfortunate that that you know. I mean, it's it is out there. It, it yeah, something that we have to learn to live with. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you mentioned earlier. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Where's that pen that I was holding a while back? Okay, no, I'm missing my pen. Who took my pen over here? Sorry oh. about that. Man. <laughs> you know what? A way to start the broadcast, but I wasn't here. But anyway, you mentioned a while back that you're not really into virtual shows. Am I correct? You're, you're not. You haven't done any virtual shows. Yet? I haven't. I've been asked to do, uh, you know, uh, virtual shows. I just don't know how well my stuff translates to it. So I haven't worked on putting a virtual show together. Um, so it, it's, I guess I'm behind the curve, um, mm -hmm. way behind the curve because now we're coming, you know, we're, we're coming back to, to, to live shows. Um, so I, I enjoy, uh, you know, watching them. I've seen quite a few of them, uh, you know, I, I've, uh, and, uh, and some of the stuff that you can do virtually is amazing. You know, there, there are things that you can do virtually that you just can't do. Uh, you know, in, in a live show. In a live show, yeah. 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 So um, I, I just, um, I, I, I didn't want to, I didn't know if I, if I put the investment into creating a virtual show and, you mm -hmm. know, getting equipment and all that. Um, I didn't, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to translate that to, to make it work for me. So I was just like, okay, I'll just wait till things turn around again. But are there uh, live shows already uh, in the U.S.? I mean, is it happening now or oh, not it's, that it's much? Slowly, yeah, it's slowly starting to happen. Uh, you know, things are starting to open up. Um, I've gotten actually some calls to do, uh, you know, some shows for, for later on uh, during the summer and stuff like that. So, yeah, things are, are turning around. Oh, thank you. Nice to know that. Yeah. By the way, mm -hmm. what age did you start in magic and how did you get into magic? I mean, is it started as a, as a hobby or what? Well, okay, so every magician has their origin story, and usually it's, you know, somebody in the family, a grandfather or an uncle, uh, you know, showed them a magic trick. For me, I like to tell the story that it was literally a religious experience. Ooh, magic. Wow. Yeah, well, this, this is how it's a religious experience. I have three sisters, okay? So there's four of us, and we're all one year apart. I'm the eldest, so say... Mm -hmm. I was say at five years old, it was five, four, three, two, you know, so the, we're right after each other. Okay. So, uh, so we always ran around as, as a, as a gang, as a group, you know? Um, and then when we, when we moved to, to Canada, you know, with not so much family there, it was my mom who was taking care of us. So she was always busy with the four of us. And, and she came up with a way to give herself some free time during the day. You know how Jehovah's Witnesses knock on the door? Yes, yes. So if the Jehovah's Witnesses would come to the door, my mother would let them in. Okay. And use them as babysitters. She would say, sit with the children and talk to the children. So for an hour or two, she had free time to do what she wanted to. And, you know, these were people who were, who were spreading God's word, so she didn't worry about them. But... Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in magic. They don't like magic, but Mormons do. And they do the same thing. They proselytize and they also go from door to door. To door. Okay. So when, when Mormons came to the door, my mother let them in, sat us down. And uh, I, I was too young at the time to really understand the intricacies of the Mormon religion. So I, I couldn't get into it. But one of the, the elders, Elder Black, in order to keep my interest, started showing me magic tricks. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first trick he showed me was very simple. He had a penny in one hand and he closed his hands 
asked me to guess which hand and all of a sudden it was in the other hand. So that completely freaked me out. So um, the following week when he came back, I showed him how I thought he did it. So he was like, oh, you're very close. Let me show you how I actually did it. That way, you know, you don't get caught when you do it. So he started to teach me magic tricks. So okay. literally Mormons, it was, it was, it was a religious, ex you know, Mormons started teaching me. Um, and then I saw movies. I saw The Great Houdini with Tony Curtis. Um, and, and that uh, influenced me. I, I tried to get into escapes for, for a while. Um, and then, uh, it, it, it was, uh, uh, <laughs> that, it, it, you know, I saw this when I was younger. So imagine, uh, I, I didn't know anything about escapes. So I would okay. ask my sisters to, to just tie me up and I would, I would find a way to get out. And so imagine, you know, a 10, 11 year old, I would just go up to people and say, give them rope and say, tie me up <laughs> <What>? <laughs> because I, I, I wanted to escape. So they would, I would, I would get people to tie me up, and and I would escape, um, and then it became known in the school that this is what I, you know, I was into this. So one day, my friends asked me, uh, you know, can you get out of chains? So I thought about it, and I was like, you know, I, I don't see why not. It's probably the same thing. So uh, after school that day, they took me. Uh, we, we, were, we were walking home. We went to the bicycle rack, um, and they took their bicycle chains and they chained me to the bicycle rack. What? And then, and then, and then they were like, okay, they wanted to see me get out. You know, so they chained me to the bicycle rack. I, I didn't know anything about, you know, gimmick, anything. I, I used to just yeah. wriggle out of things. So they chained me to the bicycle rack. And after about 20 minutes of waiting for me to try to get out, they <laughs> bored. You know, and they were like, oh, we have to go home. We have to get dinner. We'll come back later. And literally, they just left me chained to the bicycle rack. <laughs> okay. So, that's great. That's great. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It took me probably, yeah, it took me probably about another half hour to actually escape. Escape. Yeah. Because Ooh. I was scraped up and everything, but I did get out. You know? <laughs> The so, unconventional way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, that that's that you know, so I, I never I never got deep into escapisms, but that's that was w one of my escape stories from very early on. Yeah. So uh, okay, we, we're almost of the same the same age, right? So mm -hmm. I'm uh 32 and you're 34. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and okay, uh, during my time I grew up mm -hmm. with uh a TV show hosted by I don't know if I don't know if you've seen this. It's a TV show hosted by Bill Bixby. It's called The Wonderful World of Magic. That's I, where I rem yeah, I remember the show. Yeah, I remember the show. Yes. Yeah. yeah, only to find out that the show was clippings of performances from a FISM during that time. Oh, okay, okay. So it, yeah. there are Richard Ross, Ali Bongo, uh, the greats. Yeah. All the yeah. greats, uh, the mm -hmm. Tom Sony. I, I don't know if Tom Sony mm -hmm. was there when he was still young, but Omar Pasha was. I mean, I don't know if, that, if that's still during this that time. But uh, Richard Ross, Norm Nielsen with mm -hmm. the violin, absolutely, and yeah, no, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then after oh. that, there was TV shows by uh, Blackstone, then followed by Doug Henning, and of course David Copperfield. So yes. that's where I grew up with. Uh, Idolizing all those magicians that I saw mm -hmm. during my, my childhood. Mm -hmm. But anyway, who's your magical influences right now? Yeah, you see, okay. First of all, did you venture in? Do you really want to be a magician? Uh, you know, I I guess I always did want to become a magician. Uh, not to get deep or, or you know philosophical or, or whatever, but I uh, you know I I've let go of a lot of dreams. Mm. You know. Uh, but I refuse to relinquish magic. You know, there, 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 are, there are other things that that I've just thought, okay, for practical reasons, I have to give this up and move on to something else or whatever. But uh, yeah, I, I refuse to. <laughs> Although I did stop. Oh. Uh, you know, l life got in the way, and uh, from the mid '90s or early '90s till. The early 2000s. I, I, I got back into magic. I stopped probably around 94. 
I stopped doing magic. Uh, and then uh, around 2004, I, I got back into it. But um, it, 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 that, that's actually funny because I uh, was talking with, with a friend and apparently there was a rumor. There, you know, there were different rumors as to why I stopped doing magic. My favorite yeah. one was someone uh, started spreading the rumor that I, I gave up magic to become a virtuoso on a violin. So, <laughs> so although I can play a little bit of violin, I am nowhere near <laughs> being a virtuoso on it. Yeah, but uh, uh, you know, uh, things happened and life happened, and uh, you know, I gave it up for for a little while. I pursued other uh, other areas. Um, I got uh, during that time. I was uh, uh, into mentalism. I was into hypnosis. I practiced different wow. allied arts. Um, yeah. So there, there were. Uh, I've, I've been pretty lucky in who I've met and who I've become friends with, um, and uh, you know, I've been able to share, you know, in, inner secrets. I got, I got to to meet. There's, a, there's a group here in on the East Coast in the New York area, known as the the Thirteen, uh, in in uh, uh, the mentalism circles, uh, okay. and I, I was uh, honored to be invited to a, a couple of their meetings because of the things that I. I'd uh, come up with, um, and uh, you know, a few of the big names in in in, in, in mentalism became became have been become good friends, and and still are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. This, this, this this include uh, wait, what's the name of this guy? Uh, how about Charles Gauchi? Oh, I I, I know Gauchi, but I, I I've never actually met him. Oh, uh, here uh, here. Earl. I, I've I've met Lee Earl here here on the East Coast. Uh, uh, guys like um, uh, Mark Salem uh, mm -hmm. uh, become friends. Uh, Ted Karmilovich, Mark Sky. Excuse me. There's some local guys that people haven't heard of. Um, uh, Ford Cross. He's since passed on. Uh, John Smetana. There 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 are uh, uh, local guys that have contributed uh, a lot to, into the field. Um, uh, and uh, it, it's good to you know to be able to, to share with them. It's funny because the the thinking behind one versus the other. Uh, Ted Karmilovich would always when, when I would come to him with an effect I was working on in mentalism. His advice to me was stop thinking like a magician. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> so it, it's it's a different mindset. You know, uh, as magicians we 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 uh, get very involved in like you know methodology and oh this is really cool and i can do it this way and blah 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 whereas in mentalism they want to keep it simple they want to keep it very straightforward um uh very direct you know so try to get from here to here as, in as in as least many steps as possible so <laughs> wait, wait did you venture into you mentioned you went to mentalism and other stuff but did you went into i mean did you do stage magic i mean uh, did you work with dubs or something like that? I I, I worked with dubs, and uh, it's funny because I, uh, <laughs> I I I still get. I, I used to have a dub act. It was like a fifteen minute act. Um, oh wow! And uh, sometimes, one of the stories I tell is is uh, we get we get caught up in our minds. I remember one time I was doing I was doing the act, and uh, the opening sequence of the act was I would come out. This was when you could still uh, bring a cigarette on stage with a lit cigarette. Okay. This is a long time ago, right? So I'd come out with a, with a lit cigarette, come out and have a piece of uh, paper, fold it into an origami crane, flap its wings, oh. and then touch, throw, and the fireball would turn into a dove. Dove, yeah. So that, that was the opening sequence. Um, but one particular show... I don't know what I was thinking, but instead of instead of coming out with the cigarette to touch the crane, I made the crane and then I brought it up to my face. So, <laughs> so I had this giant ball of fire just erupt across my face. Wow. All right. And I mean I reacted by flailing my arms. So there was a dove production. The audience <laughs> Did not know anything was wrong. 
because there was applause, but I had friends that were in the room, and from the back of the room, I just heard, oh, yeah, they were, they were, they were they gasping were, and everything. And I reached up, and I, hair was just coming out in my hands. I'm like, my eyebrows oh. probably gone. I'm 30 seconds into a 15 minute act, and I have to finish this act with my face burnt off. <laughs> so, wow. so I. So while you're on stage, the lights are hot, sweat starts coming off, the salt, the salt from the sweat starts to sting because my face is burnt. Uh, yeah. Look, yeah. So, but I, I went through. I, I finished. I finished my set, uh, and luckily, because it, it was such a quick fire, because flash, you know, yeah. flash paper. For, for was, file, for luckily, file. that there, there were no real uh, burns. You know. So it, it was, uh, I, I did singe my eyebrows off. I singed my hair off. Um, but that was, you know, that was a crazy dub story. Um, and uh, uh, a little while after that, um, I, uh, I, I retired my doves, but I wanted to keep doing the, the uh, routine. Mm. Um, so I got the idea in my head that instead of doves, I would produce teddy bears small teddy stuff bear. toys yep stuff toys so um I, I worked that out to do that and and uh i became known for a little while for doing this teddy bear routine and uh, i remember the first time i got hired to do this it was at a magic convention oh, so wow. the most of uh you know it was a small local convention so most of the the people in the audience were magicians that had known me uh for doing my dove act right so, so they, were, they were quite surprised when they see the teddy bear hat. Well, that that was just it. When I when I came out with with a silk and I, and I do the first production, all they see is a lump of white in my hand and it's not moving. So so I had a half the audience thinking that it's a dead dove in my hands, right? because you could hear them like, "Oh my!" You could hear, "Oh no!" You could. Hear, yeah. And then I was like, "Oh no, no, no! Wait, wait, wait! It's 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 a teddy bear. It's it's okay. It's a teddy." Bear. So when when they when they saw that it was that, then okay, they felt better. But for a moment, you know, I had to half an audience think that I I, I had a a horrible thing oh. happen to me and said, "Yeah." <laughs> right now, you're concentrating on close-up magic, right? Most of my stuff is close-up right now. Uh, uh, Close-up and stand-up. And I, actually what I've been uh, trying to do is take a lot of my close-up and, and uh, bring it up off the table or bring it from here to, you know, to to uh, more, more of a, uh, a, a platform type presentation. Yeah. Okay, by the way, what's the, the, the I always get confused with this one. What's the, the difference between close-up, I mean, between stand-up parlor and uh, that was the last Last uh, thing that you mentioned, well, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, well, I mean, they they are, I guess, under the same umbrella, but I mean, close up is is considered, and 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 you'll hear a lot of people from the old school, you know, that say nobody really does close up magic anymore, because mm -hmm. you know, you 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 have people people are up, you know, you have a screen, you know, a giant screen, you have, you know. I mean, for close-up magic, it's you at a table with, you know, not not necessarily a table, but you with, you know, four, six people, and, and they're around you, you know, seeing everything like that. Um, when you start moving back, then you, you it shifts into parlor and stand-up, you know. Th th those two are pretty much the same thing. You're, you're in parlor and stand-up. Then, of course, you have, you know, big stage productions. Um, but uh, I, I, I enjoy... Doing close up, some some of the stuff that that, that I've come up with are, are so crazy focused that you know, I mean you have to be standing like right over it for some you know to, to see to see the the, the actual yes, thing work. The actual show, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's that's very close up, you know. <laughs> well, that's, so, that's always a debate here when we have competition, close up magic competition. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Uh, if I am to do a comp, I mean, if I will be uh, doing a close-up competition, if I'll be the one organizing it, I mm -hmm. just want one table and two mm -hmm. chairs on the side. Right. And that's the stage. That's about it. You need not to, you need not to stand up anywhere or something like that. But some of the guys 
tend to stand up a bit and do a bit of, you know, and sometimes close up they'll be uh, producing canes. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yes, yeah, well, I mean, here, me. let, let, let me point. demonstrate. Can I? Uh, let me just uh, demonstrate quickly uh, okay. what I what I mean with. Okay, so let this me is. Put you on. This, uh, yeah. Okay. There you go. So this is a close up version that I came up with. I came up with this years ago, but if if you rub the rubber band, this is a chopstick through it, you get a penetration. I don't know. I don't know if you actually saw that, but that is a close up here. So uh, what I did, what I did, this was something that I shared uh, quite a long time ago with uh, 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 the the Godfather, Vinny Marini. Ah, uh, Vinny Marini, yeah. yeah. So I sh I shared this with him, and he released it under Liquid Band, uh, the name Liquid Band. So what I did was, it's the same thing, but instead of you know, so now now this is still pretty much the same effect. Okay, and you, you get the penetration also, but um, this time around it's it's not uh, it's not so tight. I don't know if I don't know if you you know so you're you're here, but you get the penetration there. You see, yes. So it it it's the same effect, but uh, you know versus here, which is extremely close up. I just changed it to here, the and now, now a lot, yeah, now a lot of people are are doing it uh, that way. There there is. There have been several uh, versions that have been uh, that have been released like that, so it, it, it's a back and forth kind of thing. Um, I need to wear my eyeglasses. I mean, so my uh, pair of eyeglasses so I can see it clearly a while back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, just just uh, um, just doing things. Okay, so here, let me come a little closer here. Okay, I'll put you once again on. Uh, yep, okay. There we go. So this is uh, pretty much a routine: the crazy man's handcuffs. Handcuff, yep. The, yeah, that uh, everybody, as magicians, well, we know of. W one of the things that I like to do when I do, when I do my magic is to, uh, or, or one of the things that I feel when I'm doing my magic is, if say a dozen magicians were asked to to do the exact same trick, okay, um, I want when an audience without any prompting to be able to look at everything, look at what I did, and go, there's something different. That one mm -hmm. was different, okay. So I, I tried to ch to just um, just change things a little bit. So one of the things about this is, you know, you go up and down, you go side to side, right? Yes. But if you were to do a link, you should you should just be able to rub like that, you see, <laughs> and cause one to pass through the other. You should you shouldn't have to go again. You go up, you go down, you go side to side, and you just rub again, you see, and, and they should just. And link, yeah. Melt apart. Melt apart, yep. All right. Um, so I decided to change things up. When, when, when watching other magicians do this uh, from across the room, you'll see them go like this. Okay, right? yeah. Standard as, as, basic move. Right. So what, what I decided was I, I wanted to change the beat. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're here. That That's all you need to do to cause that. Mm. You know? To cause the unlink so somebody looking at that they, they, you know they, they will just be like oh that's different you know they, they you you'll feel the difference um you know even even just causing uh, you know the, the the link here um you can just kind of yeah but it's in the middle already yeah cause that to pass through the other right so it, it's just causing one to pass through the other and uh, you, you want to just do it as I, I try to do it as openly as you can, you know, try to make things, try to make things uh, as, as open. There, there are a lot of times when our, bo our, our body language, our hands, whatever, are, are, are strained, are closed, uh, you know, and uh, th those are things that I feel that, uh, you know, an audience can, can pick up on. Um, so I, I I try to keep my magic as relaxed as I can, you know, j just mm. just doing things, yeah. So, well, thank you very much, uh, Vincent. By the way, guys, it is uh, this is Let's Talk Magic episode number eleven, featuring our good friend from New Jersey. He's a kababayan. His name is Vincent Mendoza. And once again, for those who are watching, please don't forget to share the stream and of course, click the heart emoji. Thank you very much. Show some love. Thank you, guys. Guys, now, Vincent. Uh, yes. You migrated in the U.S. 1997, right? I mean, 1977, uh, you went to, I mean, you migrated. No, seven, uh, 74. 
That's 74 to Canada. To Canada, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, uh, we moved to the to the states in eighty six. Eighty six. But originally, mm-hmm. where are you from? Uh, the, from Manila again? Um, I I grew up in uh, uh, the house that I remember was in Balintawak mm-hmm. on Galino. Okay, I can give you the the phone number ten twenty one twenty. I still remember that number. So, <laughs> but uh, I don't know if you call it if anybody will answer. But I don't even know. If it's <laughs> well, if I, I remember our telephone number then in Kalokan, it's two uh, two three nine o a two three nine James Bond. Oh, okay. Three nine o o seven. Oh, okay. <laughs> By the way, uh, aside from magic, do you have? I mean. You are you a full time magician, or you have a, do you have a day job or something? I uh, I work with uh, with the development mentally disabled, uh, you know, during the oh, day. Right. Uh, yeah, so uh, you know, I, I just help them get through their days, um, help them, yeah, just just what, whatever it is that they, they, that they need during the days. So, uh, the the guys that I work with are are higher functioning, um, so uh, they live in in their own apartments. So I just rotate for, around from apartment to apartment to make sh- checking up on them, make sure things are okay, and if you know they, they need assistance with anything, then uh, you know I, I go ahead and I do that for them. Yeah. So um, um, uh, a while back we were uh, talking before the broadcast. You mentioned mm-hmm. you had a lot of work. I mean, you I uh, used to, in uh, an X, I mean, X-ray technician. Am I correct? Am I is that um, at one point in my life? I was an ultrasound technician. Oh, ultrasound I, technician. Yeah. I, uh, I, and then what I, I think I, I did was I, I over-specialized. I, uh, um, when, when I got into the field, you know, I, I was at the hospital. I was gen- a generalist. I, I would do all kinds of different ultrasounds. Uh, but then I went to work for a urologist group. Uh, mm. So... I became very specific with doing urologic ultrasound. Um, and uh, I actually, uh, I helped the, the doctors there pioneer uh, um, the, the technique of, uh, of anesthetizing uh, during uh, prostatic biopsies to, uh, to the doctors there. Uh, before then, it was just, they went in, they did a biopsy, it hurt. And then I worked with, uh, with the two doctors there. It was uh, Dr. Rossman, Dr. Vaselli. And they developed a technique, uh, you know, to, to anesthetize before uh, before the process. So, and, and uh, I did that for about ten years, and then I, I had so many different jobs. Moved into uh, um, after that, I moved into computers for a while, and then that was around the time that the bottom fell out of it, uh, mm. and then I moved. I moved into. I moved in, so yeah, I've, I, I've done several different things. I opened up my own uh, DJ company. Uh, that, that's still running. I still, I still do uh, DJ work. Um, wow! Huh? <laughs> so, a little, a little bit of everything. Yeah. So uh, it, let's call it jack of all trades, something like that. Yes, that that is exactly right. My my uh, friends, you know, they'll refer to me as a Renaissance man. But my dad used to just call me a jack of all trades, and he was closer than my friends were. <laughs> In my case, I call myself the jack of all trades, master uh, of none. Master of none, is it? Master of none. <laughs> yeah. no, by the way, uh, what's your favorite magic convention that you, uh, I mean, as, I mean, of course, 4F, mm. and what, aside from 4F, are there any other well, magic conventions that you love attending the most? Memory, memory wise, the the one that I remember uh, having like the best fun at was one of the, uh, it was in in the late eighties, but the New York Magic Symposium. Um, mm. It was that that was I had a great I remember having a great time there. Um, I remember. Uh, the lectures were were staggered, sort of like uh, like college classes. So so that you know you didn't have to be at a specific lecture because if if okay. if you missed you know say the ten o'clock there was there was a twelve o'clock session. 
you know, oh, okay. so, so they, they were staggered that way. Um, and, uh, I was like, Oh, and, and I got, I got to, you know, experience a whole, a whole bunch more, uh, the desert magic seminar way back when that was a, whole, that was a whole lot no of long fun. time ago. Yeah. That, that, that became, uh, 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 what is it now? Magic. Is it magic live? Is that what it right is now? now? I think it's magic live because yeah. it's in Vegas, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's become magic live. Yeah. But, uh, that's the one that uh, Ronnie and I met met at. Ah, um, oh, Magic Live in Vegas. I see. Quite a while ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I enjoy the smaller conventions. And the bigger um, ones. Yeah, because you can really you know spend time with 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 people at the smaller conventions. You know. Uh, uh, are, are you a member of any uh, magic organization aside from Magic Circle? I mean, are you a member uh, of uh, let's say IBM or uh, SAM? I, or I, I, I was uh, IBM for a long time. Uh, I'm a member of the SAM. Uh, I was president. I was vice president and then president of the local of our chapter uh, 161. Um, I, oh, I yeah. just uh, um, we we had elections, so I you know I relinquished uh, the, the title um, uh, to move on because. It, it's a you know it's it, it's a two year term and I was already I was two years vice president and then four years yeah. president and wow, I was like, they must oh. really like you huh? and yeah. love you <laughs> I was like give somebody else a chance you know <laughs> it's, it, so so uh, yeah I relinquished that um, but um, I love you know I love working with uh, with with the uh, society of uh, a young magicians. Um, I have a friend of mine who, uh, who runs uh, that chapter, so I've I've uh, lectured for them, uh, you know, a few times just to, you know, to, to go over. There, there's like so much. One of the things that uh, that, that I, I like, you know, just 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 showing them is there's you're you're not just doing a series of moves. You're employing so many other skills. Mm. You know, you have to be you have to be okay. You're you're like a boy scout. You have to be prepared for whatever eventuality, you know, uh, you have to have other avenues, you know, that, that you go through. Uh, you have to have all, all of these other psychological things that are, that are involved. So it, it makes some, you know, something as simple as, uh, you know, like a prediction trick where you, where you pull out, say four different objects, red, yellow, blue, you know, a pen or whatever. And you just ask somebody to, to choose one. And then you, you hold that object up and it says, I knew you would pick this. But if, you know, you know how things work. So if they chose any of the other ones, you would have a separate ending. They would, they would, you know, think that it ended the same way, but you have different, you know, different outs. So, you know, just, 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 just to teach like preparedness, that's a, a way of being, you know, not knowing to cover your bases. You know, so. <laughs> By the way, you you lectured for uh, Penguin Magic, but before we go to that one, okay, how many effects do you have, or how many products do you have in the market right now? Are currently in the market now? Um, so there's string theory. Uh, when uh, when Xavier Spade and uh, and uh, uh, Eric Jones first opened up Lost Art, they're they're good friends. So they asked me if oh, actually I have it right here. Um, you know you make paper roses. Yes. So I had to, uh, I had to re. I decided that I didn't like. I, they didn't look real enough for me. So what I did was I came up with a, a way of creating this. So this, uh, I've named after my mother. This is now called Illuminada's Rose. Um, oh, Illuminada, looming. Yeah. Looming, yes. Looming, yeah. yeah. So uh, the I. I put out well when, when I put it out with them. I called it uh, the Saint uh, Exupéry Rose, uh, named after the the writer of the Little Prince. So if you're making it with tissue with uh, napkins, mm -hmm. I call it I call it the the Saint Exupéry Rose. If you make it with tissue paper, which is uh, more rigid, I call it Illuminator's Rose. But this this is uh, that, that's what uh, it looks like there. So I put that out with uh, with them. Uh, let's see. What else do I have? I, I have the Penguin Lecture. Um, I don't, I think that's it. Oh, what's your comment about, let's say, piracy? I mean, which one? Pi piracy, let's say, your, your, uh, oh, piracy lecture or something like that, or some of the products. <laughs> you know, um, one of the, the first thing that I released myself 
was something called the Flirt Manuscript, F-L-R-T Manuscript. And it was, yeah, yeah. It was just a, a, a PDF of a couple of rubber band moves. Um, and within like, I don't know, a couple of weeks of me starting to sell this, it was suddenly, you know, it, it was it was being pirated. And initially, I had two reactions. My first reaction was, you know, this is so cool because I am I'm on the same sites. I, you know, people are taking my stuff. It's up there with Daniel Garcia, with you know, with all these big magicians. And then at the same time, I was like, I'm a guy in New Jersey that nobody knows about. <laughs> Why are they even taking my stuff? And uh, what what bothered me most, I remember this particular <laughs> was. I, I had kept a list of everyone that I sold my product to at the time. Oh, and there, nice, nice. It was somebody in Colorado Springs, okay? Um, and I, I, had, I had a very low-tech uh, way of tracking uh, the, the, the PDF. Okay. I, I, I inserted a binary code within each one. So, I mean you would have to know that there was an actual binary code to look for it, but there, there, there's no way to just, to, to, you know, so I, I knew which copy this, this was. So it didn't annoy me that this guy necessarily pirated it, but what annoyed me was he tried to make it sound like he figured it out. He was explaining oh. it himself that, you know, okay, this is how he did it. I work. So, <laughs> So I remember contacting him. I called him on the phone and I, I was like, hey, listen, so-and-so, I don't care that you you are, you know, you're putting my stuff out there, but don't try to take credit for my work. The, the, you know, this is something. So uh, it was funny because then I remember the next day I looked and, you know, what he had posted had disappeared. So I guess you I see it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, you know, the thing of it is, uh, it, it is like trying to hold back the tide. You know, mm. it's it's unfortunate, uh, but you you can't stop it. You know, um, not that I like it. Is you just you, you know, you, you just can't stop it. it it's uh, you know, like I said, I, I I insert little security measures in in, in what I do, so I know. Uh, that I can track things. If if uh, you know if I meet people, there's there's one person that actually you know I I got in a back and forth with, and I told them that you know I, I'm never going to sell anything else to you, ever again. Uh, the only way that you will the, the only way that you will own anything else of mine is if if you pirate it. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> so. It's, a, it's a good thing to put a security code something like that in every uh, PDF that you uh, that you sell, yeah. so you know who is. <laughs> Uh, selling copies of your works or something like that. Yeah. Oh, somebody put, oh, sorry about that, Robert. <laughs> I'm okay, sure it okay. wasn't them. It was just some random guy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you know why? He used to own a magic shop in uh, in Boulder, Colorado. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and I met him. I don't know. Are you a member of the cafe, Magic Cafe? I met him at that Magic Cafe. I, I was, uh, yeah, I, I, was, uh, I was very active earlier on in the Magic Cafe. Um, not, 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 uh, I haven't been as much there because it, it gets very politics. Incestuous. Yeah. It gets very incestuous. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, can you show us something aside from the rubber band? Uh, can you show us uh, sure. uh, something? I mean, um, one of the, one of the things that, uh, I have become, uh, uh known for, um, are, uh, are the rings. Okay. Um, I've, come to call them uh, Ronin rings. Um, Ronin. Yes, because uh, as, as a Ronin uh, is, is a samurai without a master, mm -hmm. right? Um, so uh, I've just worked on different ways of playing with the rings so that you can touch them like that, causing one to link through the other. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, nice. And uh, if you uh, actually drop the bottom ring, you'll see solid metal pass right through solid metal. Okay. <laughs> These are made out of something called uh, unobtainium. 
Any Unobtainium. Avatar fans? Unobtainium from Avatar, yes. <laughs> yeah, if you take the one and just touch it through, you see that that completely links through it. It's through the very front that they unlink. You see, mm. you know, let me just stand up. You might be able to see this as the two front edges simply touch through and completely link. You'll see that that one passes through that. Completely passing through the other. Okay. And these are the Ronin rings. So the <laughs> nice. Thank you. <laughs> Now, so, in case for those who are watching, is that available in the market or no? Uh, th this is uh, a routine that I've developed over the last 10, 12 years. Uh, and I am being, I'm getting ready to release it, basically. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, a, a lot of people have, have uh, kind of asked me about it. And over the past year, with COVID and everything, um, I had people contacting me, and uh, they they they've been exploring my my the grips and the holds that I've been using, uh, the links that I've been using, the unlinks. Um, so uh, uh, things. Oh, thank you very much, Leo. Thank you. Um, and so uh, they uh, bef before it gets. Uh, before somebody jumps ahead of me, I mean, I've, I've invested 10 years, at least 10 years of my life in this. Uh, I've decided that, okay, it's time to, to go. It was funny because uh, I was, this, this routine actually got me into 4F. Um, mm. in, in 2012, I went to the IBM, the combined IBM SAM convention. Convention. In um, and uh, I was just outside having, you know, conversation with, with people. And uh, a friend of mine, uh, Will Fern, uh, I hear him over my shoulder, and, and Sean Farquhar is is walking by, and Will literally accosts <laughs> Sean Farquhar. <laughs> you, 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 you had Sean on your show, but yes, Will yes. Will turns around and was like, "Sean, come over here and watch my friend's magic." <laughs> yeah. And, but Sean was on his way to do something, whatever. But Sean is such such a nice guy, you know. So he stopped and he came over, uh, uh, and uh, you know, Will was like, "Show me your rings." So I, I went through, I went through the, uh, the the routine for Sean, and uh, Sean really enjoyed it. Sean liked it. That and uh, I do a ring on rope. I'll actually, maybe I'll do that for you guys in a little bit too. But um, I did that, uh, and Sean ended up being uh, one of my sponsors for for Four F. So wow. him and Mark Souza, yeah. So, uh, so it was a, as a direct result of of, uh, of uh, the ring routine, yeah. So, but it yeah, took yeah, me. That's, a nice to know. that's nice to know. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah, yeah. But it, it took me, uh, you know, a while. I was looking for what to call them. You know, I, 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 I to be honest, I was, uh, I was. Hello, Ar Armin. Hello. Uh, I was uh, Saudi yeah Saudi Arabia I was I was uh, looking at other all the other ring routines and it always bothered me that you know for for the most part when when people are holding a ring you know you're holding you're almost half of the ring you're, you're, yes. you're with your hand so I was like well there's got to be a better way to hold these things let me open my hands you know that way you can see. You know, let me hold it like this. So I just decided to to, to change my grips on the ring, and uh, it 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 opens things up. It makes things visual. Somebody watching it, um, they 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 tell themselves they see a hundred percent of the rings the entire time. You know, so so it it, it makes things. Yeah, yeah it's a, the different. It's a different approach and a different take on the routine of the linking rings. Yeah. So, but yeah. how did you come up with the name Ronin Rings? I mean, you, you well, mentioned uh, Samurai yeah. something. I, I've, uh, I've, uh, you know, always been a, a fan of martial arts. Actually, one of my favorite shows before leaving the Philippines, and this is going back a long time, was Ramon Samurai and Dragon. 
the Bruce Lee of the Philippines. The Bruce Lee of the Philippines. Well, that's another thing. I, that's another thing I have a I have a problem with. Um, is uh, is the, 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 the we we do that Filipinos do this all the time. You know, the Frank Sinatra of the Philippines, the Bruce Lee of the Philippines, <laughs> the Elvis Presley of the Philippines. Why can't you be just you know Ramon Zamora? Roman Samora, why can't you be, you know, Chubster Flores? You are, you are, you, you know, and 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 that's what I that's what I try to do with with uh, you know my magic. I try to insert my own, you know, style. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know. So and, and like I said, when 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 people are are looking at this, like even even with this with this rose, if if twelve magicians made a rose and they just put it on a table. And you ask somebody to, to just walk up to the table and go, which one do you like best? Without <laughs> anybody being there, without anybody saying anything, I want the person to look down and go, oh, this one, you know? So it, it's just, it's just, you know, I want I want the work to stand on its own without, you Maybe know. Maybe it was really during that time, branding certain actors like Ramon Zamora as the Bruce yeah. of the Philippines. I don't yeah. know if you remember. Uh, Tony Ferrer, Tony Falcon, Agent X44. He used to be the James Bond of the Philippines. The James Bond, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so it, it's it's it, yeah. We but we 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 tend to do that, you know. I'm like, just be you of the Philippines, you know. <laughs> Make your own niche, not not someone else's niche or yeah. something like that. I mean, that that's the 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 thing, and I I hear it a lot that Filipinos are great mimics. You know, you're like. You 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 hear a combo, you hear a band, you know, a Filipino band, and you close your eyes, and it's Journey that's that's playing, mm -hmm. you know, or it's just, well, I mean, it, it's like that's wonderful, but you know, yeah, there you go, yeah, make your make own, your own name. name, yeah, absolutely, you know, so um, it it's it it it's a. Uh, uh, it's it's a little pet peeve that I have. But, you know, <laughs> so that's a so. good that's good to know. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay, let's talk about your penguin lecture. How did you end okay. up doing uh, the penguin lecture, and how was the experience of doing one? The, the penguin lecture um, was a long time in coming because uh, Sean, when when I first put out that that first magic trick, the flirt manuscript I told you about, Sean mm -hmm. Dunn, when he was still running Paper Crane, contacted me. He asked me to release it through Paper Crane. I said no, uh, because you know I, I just wanted to do uh, you know, my own thing with this thing. Um, and I, I've I've come to know Sean over the years, and you know then he went on with with Penguin, and Sean would ask me, you know, come do a Penguin lecture for us, and I kept saying no. And the reason I kept saying no was, I, I again, I'm a guy from New Jersey. I don't have a big name in magic, uh, you know. Uh, I, I I'm more uh, for for years. You, you know what? You're too humble to say you're not a big name in magic, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, until until stuff started being released. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, until stuff started being released, you know, I was just a local guy underground. You know, um, I like creating. Um, but I, I would tell him, like, if if I do a penguin lecture for you, you're gonna lose money because people are gonna be like, "What is a Vince Mendoza? You know, what's a Vincent Mendoza?" So uh, finally, uh, we met. Uh, this was in Philadelphia, and uh, Sean came up to me and and he actually said to me, "You must hate me." <laughs> I was like, "Why would you say that?" <laughs> and uh, you know, he was like, "Every time I ask you to do something." You just say no, and so I explained it to him, you know. Uh, and he's like, "No, no, 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 that's not it at all." Um, you know, he's like, "We we have actually now we have a subscription base, so you know, uh, we we are looking for that content." So I went I went ahead and uh, I did it. I had a great time. They they were wonderful. Um, the the only thing that was uh, off about the night. Was yeah, they fly you in? I was there for a couple of nights. They fly you in. We do a show that's taped, uh, and then we do the lecture itself. Mm -hmm. um, the night that I did the show, John Legend was in town doing a concert. So it, 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 it it's a college town. So uh. <laughs> so there were you know 
basically they're like you, you you're competing for a John Legend crowd right now. So <laughs> so I, I had some people there, but they're like this is usually at least twice as many people that are here. I'm like, yeah, what what are you gonna do? It's John Legend, you know. <laughs> so so uh, you know, I did my show. I did, uh, and it's funny. I had a great time doing the lecture, but afterwards watching it i'm like oh i forgot to do this i forgot to see that i forgot to talk about this i should have done this i should have you know so um uh it, it was it was uh just just a lot of of self-critiquing afterwards but the, the experience itself was a lot of fun the experience itself yeah it was definitely a lot of fun yeah Oh, yeah, and, that's, uh, nice. but the, the, that's the problem if you're competing with the John Legend and he's a legend already. By the yeah, <laughs> basing by his last name is a legend, so that's no correct. Complaints, no complaints, <laughs> no complaints. That's correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. but of course, being in Penguin Live means you are a big name in magic. So <laughs> I have a big name, Vincent Garibaldi Martinez Mendoza. So it's it's that's long. a long name, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Vincent Garibaldi. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Valdi. Martinez Mendoza, yeah. Martinez Mendoza. No yeah. relations with Daryl, huh? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you're a member of the Magic Circle in London, and mm -hmm. you are uh, designated with Associate Inner Magic Circle. What's that? Sorry, what about? No, uh, the, uh, uh, a, a, uh, is associate in uh in in, in magic. inner magic circle with a silver yes. star yeah yeah um so um a few years ago i think it i decided that i wanted to go to a convention in in london that was uh the sessions it's a smaller convention they have the huge uh convention at blackpool but then mm -hmm. they have this this smaller uh convention also called the session and i had heard a lot of great things about that um, so I wanted to attend uh, the, the session. So um, I registered for it. And then um, since I was going to be in London, I was like, well, let me see if I can audition at, at the Magic Circle. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't I didn't realize the entire process involved, you know. So I, uh, I flew over there. I was having a great time at the convention. I contacted the circle um, and I said, I'm going to be here for, you know, these four days um is it possible to come down and audition and they they said well all the audition spots are taking this was in like february no january the end of january last, um, year? What? last year no no this was 2017 oh okay. think, yeah, 2017. five years ago maybe something yeah, like yeah. That. Mm -hmm. four to five years yeah yeah so uh you know they, they were like all, all the audition slots all they call them examinations they said all the examination slots are, are booked through to march mm -hmm. you know so like, oh too bad I, I didn't realize that you know it, it was that's the way it worked so i guess i won't be able to do this uh, but that sunday i got a call at the hotel i was staying at and it was the magic circle and somebody had uh canceled, had canceled. So they're like, if you can be here tomorrow night, then you can have a service spot. So I was like, of course, you know, and I, I only had a few things with me. I had the, my ring routine. I, I had a uh, ring on rope and I had uh, um, coins through silk, that, that, what I was going to audition with. So I get there. I've, I've met a few people there before um, and uh, Daryl Rose uh, who at the time I believe was president, he, uh, you know, became my guide and he was walking me through everything. Mm -hmm. So, so there were, there were four people that were auditioning that evening. I was, I was to be one of them and I was standing in the back with Daryl. First person went up, um, started doing his routine and then he started doing a ring on rope routine. And I, I looked at Daryl and I was like, <laughs> I'm doing the ring on. I'm, literally, I, I only brought three things with me tonight. I don't have a substitute. So Daryl was like, "Oh, don't worry about it." I'm like, "Okay." Second guy gets up. He starts working and starts doing a ring on rope routine. <laughs> I'm like, "You've got to be kidding me, Daryl! This is crazy." What they're a coincidence! Be tired. Yeah, they're not going to want to see a ring on rope routine. And Daryl looked at me and it was like, just do it better than they're doing it. I'm like, oh. And you're the last to perform, right? And you're yeah. the last to perform. 
Well, no, I, I, I became the third, the third one. Okay. So, so uh, I, I, I got up very nervous, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, some prestigious names, uh, you know, in the audience. Actually, Joan Caesar, who, who helps run 4F, was sitting in the front row. From uh, Canada, Faye, right? Yes, from Canada. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Faye Presto was there, and, you know, there were the, the other luminaries that were there. So I went through how, my how routine. Many, how many, I mean, how many uh, jurors were watching your uh, audition during that time? I, I don't know exactly who was, who were the jurors, uh, but there were a room full of people. Oh. You know? So, so they, they didn't tell me exactly who, which people were the jurors, but uh, the, the room, the room was, was, a, you know, f uh, had an audience. Yeah. Um, so uh, I went through, I went through my routines um, and got a standing ovation at the end. So wow. I was, that I felt, I felt great, you know. Uh, relief. Actually, <laughs> a sigh uh, of relief. <laughs> a sigh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, Joan Caesar came up to me afterwards and invited me to, to go to 4F, and I was like, thank you so much for the invitation, but actually, I just applied because Sean Farquhar and, and uh, uh, Mark De Caesar have, have sponsored, sponsored me. Sponsored. So, yeah, yeah. So that, that was... That was uh, really really uh, uh an experience but talk talking about the the ring on rope let me just show you a couple of uh <coughs> from, thank from you thank course. you thank you okay hold on there you go no problem uh so this is uh just a quick process from the, from the ring on rope usually i i hand it out to uh to people but Chubster, For examination. yeah as i go down just say stop somewhere stop right here okay yes. i'm gonna take this i'm just gonna throw it on that spot and you see that it just links right to that spot. Okay. Nice. Thank you. That you was actually, fast. <laughs> you actually see it link right through. Now, most people, uh, they would take the ring and pull it off the rope. Some people might take the rope and pull it off the ring, but I'm not most people. I'm not some people. What we're going to do is use just the very middle part of the rope here, you see, and just give it a little tug. And if we do, it melts right off the rope. <laughs> and I mean, it's really off of there. It really is. If, <laughs> yeah. If if we wanted to go back onto the ring, what we do here is uh, just the middle there, just drop it, and you see it goes right back onto the ring. So that's just a couple of quick sequences through you know through the ring on rope routine. But uh, um, what I what I love doing with uh, with objects. Thank you. <laughs> What I love doing with objects is uh, is exploring their inherent qualities and mm -hmm. then exploiting those qualities. You know, so uh, a, a lot of my hands, a lot of the stuff that I do is just based, uh, you know, slowly, uh, solely on sleight of hand, um, not not so much on a, on a, on a gimmicks. Although I, I I don't mind using gimmicks when when uh you know it, it calls for it, um, mm -hmm. but I, I I like to take things and make them as as a uh, as as a visual as as possible. As possible, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, but that that was just you know a quick little thing on that. Um, I don't know. I have this here also. This is this is the you know let me take these here. Uh, for the the oh the coins and the yeah cards. this is this is this is uh the first time the first person I saw do this was uh uh me is I think Mike, Michael Amari, am I correct no hope you don't mind a lay person not at all Barry Banks Barry and I Barry is one of my my oldest friends from 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 uh college days but thank you hey, really very, thank you very much or more elegant and you could could you do yeah, it please that, that, yeah that's true yeah yeah, yeah could, that's could you do it please stand up routine with nothing other than the ring and the rope yes the, the there actually um with with the with that the, i have a, a couple of different versions of it there there are, are different handlings where where in close-up there are different moves that i use because you're working right with a person, whereas mm -hmm. end up, uh, you know, uh, you have, you, you are a little bit further back. So mm -hmm. some of the moves are different than that. And then I, so I call that routine the rock routine 
ROC, ring on cord, so it's rock. Mm. Um, and then I have one that's a stage version that I call it the rock, the boulder edition. B -O <laughs> so it's a bigger rock, right? A boulder edition. Um, and for that one, I don't have the ring here with me, but I, I actually, I use a, a large Kung Fu ring, Kung Fu training ring. You've seen, you see them, the metal and they're, they're, they're larger, but I have that one downstairs. I don't have that with me. Uh, but here, um, uh, with, with the silks, let me see if, if I actually even go through the entire process here. Just, oh, sorry. <laughs> of course, I would drop that one, right? Let's start that over. That ain't misdirection, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's start that over. That's one. That's two. And the last coin. Okay. So here... You'll see that the coins, I don't know how well you'll see them through here, but I will try to show them to the camera. You can see them. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, the thing about silk and the fibers in silk is they are very delicate. And if you do things just right, you can actually cause one of the silver coins to simply melt through the fibers, okay? Oh. That's coin number one. And this is part of my retirement plan, so I'm gonna say that. <laughs> you know, it's a Roth IRA. The magician should laugh at that. Roth IRA and coins, okay, never mind. Okay, <laughs> inside the five, you see there are two coins there, right? If you were yeah. here, I would actually let you touch those coins, but, Again, let me see if I can show you the coins. Yeah? Uh -huh. Okay. So here, watch carefully. These ones here, I'll move to the middle. And I have a glass here set up. So um, I'm going to try to do this one without touching the coins from the very middle. Okay. Will it melt? One coin. Oh come right out. I have a glass here. So that's coin number two. <clears throat> yep. And that comes to here. Okay. This is the last coin. Okay. This one. Let's see if I can hold it up here so you can see it. Can you see it okay? Yes. Okay. I'm going to move it towards the middle. And I'm going to actually use the glass that I was using just a little while ago. I have the glass right here. Okay. You can see on both sides. Watch carefully. That's the last one. Simply melts. Wow. So and that is called silk and silver. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, uh, George Mamuluk is uh, the head honcho of the press digitators, and he is an avid coin magic collector. So, the, oh, George, he, he loves magic and he loves close up magic, and especially when it comes to coins. Yeah, wow. I appreciate that, George. That I I, I studied uh, Michael Amar's routine. Um, I was lucky enough to meet, meet Chris Power uh, in England when I was there. Um, but I was too intimidated to show him my handling. <laughs> um, uh, so, I, but I studied his routine also, and then I got a chance to to show this routine to uh, Chris Wood and to Michael Vincent. Thank you very much. I have a question here. Yep. Yeah? Uh, could you do us a private virtual virtual, virtual lecture? Uh, I. I, we could set something up. Sure. We could set something up with, with a, yeah. Yeah. You definitely. know, when it comes to coins, he really loves coins. <laughs> it's, you know, the thing is, um, I, I, I will have to, I don't know if you can, you can tell, but uh, I have had to adapt all, actually all my magic work. Um, if you look at my hands, okay, this is me making a fist with my hands. You see, I can only close these two fingers. Mm. There, there's a, I have arthritis in oh, okay. in these fingers, and I I can't even do a simple thumb palm. I, I so uh, all, 
all my uh, all my magic has have to be, has has had to have been adapted. Um, I've had to I've had to change things. Something as simple yeah, maybe as maybe a lecture not only on coins, maybe some other stops. But yeah, oh yeah, definitely. But uh, um, <clears throat> something is th this is something I call slow mo equipment. Okay, okay but uh, you know I'm from go... here. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Left to here, to here. Okay. So you know uh, this production here of the coin. Okay. I think I flashed, but um, I needed to to get rid of uh, you know people. One of the grips that's extremely popular in Magic is JW. I can't do it. Ah. I can't do because because my hands won't won't move in that. I, so I've had to. I've had to create, adapt. Create your own, uh, your own hand grip then. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah, that's what I've had to do. The VM yeah. move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you, thank you, George. Uh, Salam uh, from the last uh, coin. I mean, coin uh, routine that you did. Well, anyway, yeah, well, George, you. I'll be uh, talking it over. If you're really interested, uh, let's let's talk it over. Let's have a Zoom meeting so we okay. can discuss things further. Yeah. Anyway, thank the thing you. is, we, thank all, you very we, much. Have, yeah. know, we just have to coordinate the time because, yeah, uh, I know, I know, you, you, you are working, and you must. I don't know if you're gonna go take a leave or something like that. Maybe only if you're free, or just can give us your free well, schedule. The, there, there are certain things that are coming up that that will that are causing me to have to take a a leave for for a little mm -hmm. while. So that that might be something that we can do uh, during that time. Yeah. Wait, a comment here. Oh. I apologize. Yeah, was that not bad with someone? That's not that's not too bad with someone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the honor is mine, George. Yeah. So, oh, I want to. I want to. I want to also show this off. I love this. This is. I don't know if you can Wait, see. I only. I now. I know. So that's hearts, clubs, spade, and diamonds. Yeah. Is that but, a creation or design or what? Yeah, yeah, I, I created this. Pero lahat, you can see mga kamay, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so the, the, they're all hands doing, making the, the different shapes. So did you design the, your, the shirt yourself or what? Yeah, I, I designed that uh, as a logo, uh, you know, trying to use it to, you know, to, you were talking about branding earlier, but that's mm -hmm. something that uh, I was looking at, that branding, you know, with that. So it, it's... Uh, it, it's something you know, that I'm happy I also. Surprised, I was surprised Mr. Mamuluk was watching. You know why? Mm -hmm. He seldom watch my broadcast. But <laughs> when he knows that there's a coin guy who's going to perform. <laughs> I was surprised he was here. Plus, George, good evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mamuluk. <laughs> yeah, by the way, I don't know. Maybe you can ask your mom or your relatives maybe mm -hmm. if they know Mamuluk restaurant. I mean... They must have, uh, uh, how should I say this? It's the, impossible what, what, for them not to know Mamunluk restaurant. I, 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 will def, I will definitely ask family, yeah. I, That's I, the best mommy show pa yeah. in Metro Manila. Why Metro Manila? Because they cannot deliver outside Metro Manila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, my, my memories of the Philippines are, you know, very old. The, the last yeah. restaurant, the, the last agree, restaurant. Yeah, I mean, agree. Yeah, I read, okay. Uh, yeah, the last the last restaurant that I I remember in the Philippines going to uh, before we left was a place called uh, Aristocrats. Yeah, uh, the Aristocrat is still no, it's still it's, uh, it's still there. Yeah, and famous for their chicken barbecue. That's yeah, uh, yeah. On the most. and it's actually one of uh, George's favorite uh, restaurant. The oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 Good so, evening. Good evening, yeah. Christina. The, hon the honest con man. <laughs> really? The honest, the con, honest man. con man. Yeah. This is tagline. Oh, tell Chubb Sir, it's nice and we'll send you over. Oh, wait. You know why? G shirt, speaking of your t shirt. Okay. George, every year for the past 10 or so years, every Christmas, he has this own magic shirt. Oh, okay. It's a shirt for magicians mm -hmm. and built in the shirt. It, it, it might look as an ordinary shirt, but mm -hmm. a shirt, but it's a mad, there's a, at least there's a magic effects. Oh, uh, 
So maybe you can send you the whole collection. <laughs> so, yeah, you know what? I don't Hindi know. Naman. So is it, uh, the thing is, if you're going to go give us your size, is it Filipino size or? Me, I'm, me, I'm large. <laughs> me, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, uh, my shirt size is large. So oh. maybe you can, I don't know uh, how to measure your size or what. Maybe mid, large or uh, extra large. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, going going back to uh, to to uh, Ronnie uh, earlier, you know, saying that I, I at one point uh, I the heaviest I was was up at three hundred and sixty five. What? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I used I used to tell people that I was kasi tangkada ko na nakahiga. I was as t- I was as tall lying down as I was standing up. You know, so, so yeah, so yeah. But luckily, you know, I, I've lost uh, half a person, and I'm, I'm down to. You know, when I got married, that was '94. Mm-hmm. I was 220 pounds. Oh. So right now, I'm around 160, close to 160. Oh, I I can't. I am right around 210. I I can't seem to break. The two hundred. Well, the thing is, I'm pre-diabetic, so I need to watch. I mean, I need to look for out, watch out for my diet and everything. But of course, there's always cheat night or cheat day. I always yeah. eat sometimes. Yeah. One of my good friends uh, told me, "Don't deprive yourself of of uh, anything that you like. <laughs> eat, eat, eat in moderation." Uh huh. But hey, uh, Vincent, again, it's nice to have you uh, here, and thank you very much for gracing our show, uh, my show. Let's talk magic. I do and appreciate yun, katulad ni Mr. Mamunlok, uh, send me your, uh, what do you call this, your uh, shirt size. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we, can get, we can get on Messenger regarding any lecturing or anything like that. Yeah, yeah maybe in there. Para let's discuss things further then. Mm-hmm. Um, ano yeah. You yeah. can have maybe have a Zoom meeting. And para at least everything is, ano, it's hard then kung puro chat on, on Zoom lang tayo. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Maybe and, I, I can, and George, send me a friend request on, you know. Uh, actually, anybody here that, that's here tonight, send me a friend request on Facebook. Remember, he's a fellow Filipino from Manila. Yan. Taong mana yan. Batang Manila yan. Yeah. Uh, kuya, 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 kuya. Kuya. <laughs> yeah. yung, eh. I'm 32, he's 40, uh, 34. So yeah. that, makes, that makes sense. Okay lang. So, kuya, any last oh. trick that you, I mean, magic that you can perform for us before I let you go? I know it's... Uh, you know what? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll do something for... For George, since he likes coins. Uh, George, press George! Coins, coins! Yeah. So, uh, ito, itong something that uh, has, has been making the rounds. Uh, uh, one of my friends, one of my good friends, Pipo, uh, Villanueva, has just released a wonderful handling of this. Uh, so, if, if you want to look that up. Uh, Pipo? I mean, P-I-P-O? P-I-P-O. Yeah, Pipo Villanueva. Villanueva. From, from, from Spain, yeah. So... Um, the, the thing about silk and what not too many people know about silk is that it was once used as armor, you know? Um, oh, it, 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 armor? Yeah. In, in fact, uh, Genghis Khan issued silk vests for his, uh, for his soldiers so that if an arrow would strike them, it for wouldn't protection. go very deep and they would, they could just pop an arrow out after they strike. The thing about silk is although it would stop an arrow, if somebody walked up to them, with a with a knife, you could push a knife through the silk, and the fibers would separate, and you could mm-hmm. still get stabbed. Um, so let me see if I can display the strange qualities of silk. Uh, I have some metal coins here. Are those Chinese gonna, coins? I don't, I, yeah, no. just going to thread them through here, and uh, you'll see that the coins are there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have these coins on here, and you can see that. The coins are hanging nice. from the silk. I can tug on this all day long, and uh, the silk fibers would simply resist. And all they would do is they would remain hanging from the coin, from the, uh, from the silk. Mm-hmm. But if I apply a constant pressure to the silk, watch. You see the silk and the yes. coin begin to give as one of them simply slides off. It melts. It yes. Melts through, huh? Wow. Mm-hmm. That's the first one. That leaves two on here. That one and that one. 
okay? You'll see that they are here in the middle. And like I said, if you leave them in the middle, nothing happens. If you tug on them, nothing happens. But if you apply a constant steady pressure to the silk, you'll see one simply melt right off the silk. Okay? That leaves the final coin. And this final coin, you can see the silk running straight through the fibers. In fact, you'll see it right there in the middle. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now watch carefully because that last coin simply goes like that. Wow. There you go. <laughs> so, <Wow>. thank you. <laughs> Salamat. Good evening, JP. Good evening, JP. By the way, JP was the one who influenced me to do a talk show like this. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And, oh, so, wow. Yeah. This is by this the way, is what how what do you call that effect? I mean, is that this this is something that I call the Feng Shui way. Ah, Feng Shui way, but oh I have yep. seen several versions of the CCC. I don't know what does that, yep. that means. But yours oh. is just amazing. <laughs> that yeah, I, I uh, considering he's got arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the things that uh always I, I love Troy Hoosier's effect. Well, you know, when it first came out. Um, I love Lance Pierce's, uh, you know, version of it also. And I've seen a lot of people do different things. One of the things that uh, bugged me was when, when the coins are threaded, oh, sorry. When the coins are threaded on and hanging, mm -hmm. you know, people can see that there's something there, but you don't know how many coins are there. I mean, yes. you just don't. So I, I wanted to come up with different displays. In the two displays that I came up with, this is the, the triangle display. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a triangle. Automatically, they, they see there's three. And this one I'm very proud of. This is a Feng Shui display. That from from all the way in the back of the room, you can see that there are three coins hanging there. You know, so and and it's it's a it's a very pretty display. You know, so those those two displays uh, I came up with, and then. Uh, I needed to come up with all kinds of different handlings to make it look magical, make it look like nothing was happening when there's a whole lot happening. <laughs> so. <laughs> a charming yeah. Chinese challenge. CCC. Yeah. Okay. CCC is Chinese, Chinese charming challenge. Yeah. So th I this thought, one. I thought this chubster, chubster, chubster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, if you, you know, my advice is, is. Yeah, what's your, what's your advice to upcoming magicians and to guys who want to be magicians? But the, the thing is, you know, I here in the Philippines, there are, there are what we call instant magician. Mm -hmm. Watch some videos on Facebook and, hey, I'm a magician. Look, I can do this. It's, yeah. So what's, it's, what's your advice on really yeah, hardcore and upcoming magicians? It's, it's, it's so much more than that. Earlier, I, uh, you asked me, you know, who are my influences and I didn't yeah. really get the answer okay but if you were to ask me who's who is my favorite magician or, or, or list them my list is very simple tommy wonder mm -hmm. and then everybody else can sort it out I, I i just don't rank anybody else okay okay so i was lucky enough to have uh, met tommy back in 20 i uh, no, in a in a 89 out, mm -hmm. out in las vegas and i was lucky enough to be uh, pen pals with them for a short wow. while. We sent about six letters back and forth. I was- Letters, not letters. emails, not letters. <laughs> yeah, it was, and that was just it, it was handwritten letters. I send him I send him a letter not expecting a response, <laughs> but he, he wrote me a letter back and we corresponded uh, about six times. My problem is I was young at the time and stupid and I lost those letters. I don't, wow. I, I, I don't know. And I've moved a lot since. I don't know what happened to those letters. But Were you still in Canada there. back then? Yes. <clears throat> oh, I see. Yeah. The, oh, no, no, no. I was already here in the States. I was already here in the States. 80, mm -hmm. 89. Yeah, 89. Yeah. Uh, but there was uh, one quote that I remember from him. And he, he said, in a sea of fake magic, be a real magician. Wow, in a sea of fake magic, be a real magician. Yeah. From Tommy so Wonder, huh? That's it. Yeah. So I have always 
as much as possible try to do try to be a uh, uh, you know our culture there is so much magic agimat and ting and ting there's all there's all of these little you know until now until now so there there, there is so much of that that has been a part of of me that I, I like to try to draw on some of that and and try to make it happen you know and uh you know people uh people I will ask me why do you do you do you prefer to work for lay people versus magicians my answer is i love to work for lay people mm -hmm. so the next question is why do you come up with different ways of doing things then if you were just working for lay people and my answer to that is this if i have a way of doing something that nobody knows then everybody watching becomes a lay person okay so i i love that feeling of watching of watching an effect and just being blown away and and feeling that feeling of of you know you, you did when you were a kid or the first time you saw something you know we lose that as as we learn more in magic because we come we become jaded we all oh, we know everything mm -hmm. but if you know 37 different ways of doing a triumph and somebody comes up to you and does a 38th way of doing a triumph that you don't know then you are just as full as it so it i i'm on constantly on the search for doing that other way to uh -huh. to be able to give that feeling to everyone watching you know so I, I don't i don't want magicians sitting in my audience looking at what i'm doing going hmm that was nice technique oh that was interesting oh i like the approach that you've taken towards this move about no i want the magicians in my audience going what the wow. hell just happened <laughs> Yeah. So and 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 and, 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 and uh, that, that that's a uh, uh, Paul Gertner um, told me that uh, during during my performance at Four F, he was sitting you know he was sitting he was in the front row he was sitting beside uh, Williams, <laughs> Boris Wilde and you know all these other guys and they were like and he says to me while you were working up there we were looking at each other going. What the hell is he doing? <laughs> I've never seen. Have you seen that before? No, I haven't seen that before. So if if you know if I if you can give that feeling to magicians, imagine what lay people are feeling. You know, yeah. so you, you are. That's what I try to do with my. Magic. In Tagalog, it's nakakataba ng puso, ah. Nakakataba ng puso. Comments, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so well, but yeah. You know, you know the good thing about the I mean. Uh, the good thing about this pandemic is talking about uh, first time I met Tommy a wonder was in Shenzhen, mm -hmm. China. I attended a convention mm -hmm. there together with Mr. George Mamuluk and some of mm -hmm. our other friends. And he mm -hmm. was really a kind guy and mm -hmm. very nice, easy to approach. Now, yeah. speaking of conventions, the one good thing this pandemic is giving me as a magician, mm -hmm. you know, aside from not doing shows, talaga, I mean, mm -hmm. I get to attend magic conventions that I haven't attended. Yeah. <laughs> <Virtually. Yeah. laughs> I attended the Blackpool convention. I attended uh, Oh wow. For I mean the Blackpool went online last April. I mean April mm -hmm. first, I mean first week of April. Well wow. it started at 1 a.m. in the morning, ended up at 5 a.m. Imagine. <laughs> I was really up and I'll be attending another convention uh this May. Uh some are free, some are you have to pay, but register, uh, yeah, yeah. Instead of I mean Instead of uh, securing a tourist visa, instead of yeah. booking hotel, yeah. airfare, mm -hmm. well, yeah. for a small amount, I can attend the convention right now. So yeah, that's great. I'm happy. And I'm yeah, also happy great. that you uh, grace my show. Let's talk magic. Oh. I hope you enjoyed your guesting. I, I, I had a great time with you guys. Thank you, everyone, for having me on. I, I'm, I'm really honored to, uh, to be here. And, uh, you know, uh, listen. Filipinos need to represent themselves more in magic. We we have to be we have to be out there, you know. Uh it it's uh, uh it's funny because uh uh you know we, we are good we are you know are, are very creative, we are very artistic um but we have to move past just imitating and becoming, you know, original. Salamat, salamat sa inyo lahat. Salamat sa inyo lahat. Thank you very much.
And, and you know what? Uh, I know that I don't know if you're friends with Ron Salamanquero. He's a it's also I, I watched yeah, I watched this I watched this episode with you. Yeah, I I, I love his handling of CC uh, of CCC also. He does he does a wonderful handling of it. Yeah, and I mean some of his products are uh, at Murphy's as well. So mm -hmm. check him out. Uh, his name is yep. uh, Ron Salamanquero. Yeah, and anyway. Uh, thank you very much for joining me for tonight's uh, Let's Talk Magic episode. And guys, hold on. Before I go, I usually uh, have a question and answer portion. Again, this prize that I'll be giving out is uh, from the generosity of, of course, our good friend, Mr. Robert Daru from Pampanga. Okay. So the question for this one will be coming from our guest for tonight. Oh, okay. And you know what? The answer that you gave me, I'm a huge fan of this guy. Oh, okay, okay. Because Excellent. I mean, my character it comes to presentation. It's some, I mean, that's something like that. But I'm also more into. I'll tell you more about. I, I don't know if I'm giving away clues already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Ito yung prize na mapapanaluna ng lucky uh, viewer natin. Again, through the kindness or generosity of Mr. Robert Laru, it's Cubics. Quick change bag by Lee Alex. Balik ka rin ko lang yung camera ko, ha? Yan, para nakikita nyo. Yan. Uy, naka-green screen kasi kaya invisible yung letter B. Oh. <laughs> again. Ayan, ha? Ayoko sana ang pamigay ito. Maganda to. Pwede sa mga shoes ko to. But, again, <laughs> this is the item that I'll be giving out right now. Again, again, Mr. Bob Daru, thank you very much for uh, giving me a chance to give this away. Even though I don't want to give this away. <laughs> okay. Wait, may isa pa bang comment? Oh, wait. Again, uh, likewise, it was an honor. Wala pa naman magto two hours pa lang naman. Boy, you've been with us for two hours. Thank you for us. <laughs> Bihira yan. <laughs> you know, like, if you like someone, yung mga guests ko lalo, pag, so, something to do with coins. But you know what? I don't know if you know this guy. Ito talaga yung, he really wants to have a one-on-one -on -one session with this guy. I don't know if you know him. Luis Pedrahita. Oh, Luis is fantastic. I don't know him personally. But yes. Yeah, Luis is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah that's really annoying. Actually, we tried reaching out to him and uh, asked him to do a lecture beforehand during the pandemic, but he uh -huh. really is begging off. I know he's a huge star in, uh, is it Spain or? Spain, yeah, yeah. Spain, and he's an yeah. artist. And aside from mm -hmm. that, aside from being a magician, he's an actor, a director. So it's really hard. But anyway, hopefully, someday, press George, someday. Grabbing grab it C, C, JP. Eh, Pilipino tayo. Anong gagawa natin? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, he's also got his own channel eh. JP, oh. can you type in your channel para ma-promote ko na rin? Sorry ah. Yung ano mo, yung channel mo. But anyway, habang inaantay natin yung comment ni JP, ito yung question natin. Huwag kang tumawa dyan. I'm serious. Okay. <laughs> this is the question coming from Mr. Vincent Mendoza. Again, the one who can answer the question correctly gets to bring home this one. I mean, I'll okay. mail it to you. Yan. And the question is, most magicians fear dying on stage. Which magician, famous for having his fa trick fails, actually died on stage? Again, ulitin ko ha. Most magicians fear dying on stage. Which magician, famous for uh, having his tricks, his tricks fail, actually died on stage? So, sino yung pangalan ng magician na yun? By the way, yung ano ni Steam Boogie TV. Maybe you can check out him. Uh, his uh, Facebook page, guys. Of course, support my friends' fake Facebook fake boots, fake boots, <laughs> Facebook page. <laughs> Team Boogie TV, ayan. Oh, local, yan. Hindi ko sa kung local to basta. Again, ah, huh? I'll give you one minute. <laughs> Ayoko ng pamigay. May timer na ngayon ni. Eh. <laughs> Again. Most magic kasi hindi niyo nag-google na to kasi every time I'm going to be asking a question and this every, every episode you are just trying to google the answer so this one is not googleable. Eh, may tama ba tama ba sabi ko? Is it the correct? Is it the correct term? Googleable? Yeah, yeah. Googleable. You just going to google mm -hmm. it again. Uh, my question is wait, masyado na nakababad to. Hindi pa ako binabayaran ni JP. Tanggalin ko na to. Wait. Saan na ba 'yon? Me, me now. <laughs> I don't know, Mr. Laru, do you know the answer? But the thing is, if you win this, you're going to go donate it back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Again, most magician fear dying on stage. Which magician famous for having his tricks fail actually died on stage? I'll give you 
one more minute. But in the meantime, while I'm waiting for the answer again, uh, Vincent, thank you very much yes. for having uh, for uh, joining me at Let's Talk Magic. And again, for sure, I'll be in uh, in contact with you to get your thank shirts, you. guys. And yeah. let's let's talk about let's say a possibility of a virtual lecture. Okay, sige. You know, okay, lang it's lang. not all about coins and. Uh... Yeah, the, 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> look, look at the comment by Mr. Larue. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, nobody answered. But again, the first one to answer it correctly was Mr. Bob Larue. It's Tommy Nama. Cooper. You know why? I'm Nama. telling you, it's one of my, my idols because I all love doing comedy magic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I have some of I have a, his book over here, and I have a. Uh, I think some of his videos. And you know what? I also watched yung Tommy Cooper 100 years uh, recently lang yun eh. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, just a few months ago they, they released it. Uh, yeah. Magic, so, yeah. so again, Mr. LaRue, thank you very much. Ano to? Akin na to? No, you're just joking. So again, next week I'll be raffling it off or maybe pas muna I'll be raffling off another item, not this one muna. So no takers, but in lang, it's a, it's a very very hard question coming from our guest, Mr. Vincent Mendoza. <laughs> thank you everyone for having me. So Hope once again, Vincent, you thank you very much for uh, gracing a uh, Let's Talk Magic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> kang ganyan, JP. <laughs> kang ganyan. Okay, yeah, it's, it's very very hard. So once again, guys, put your hands together for our Kababayan. Broadcasting all the way from New Jersey, it's the one and only Vincent Mendoza. Come on, guys. A thank virtual you. clap for Bye -bye. Vincent. Thank you. Vincent, thank you very much. I'll be putting you backstage for a while. Okay. Hope to see you soon, man. Okay. okay. Once again, Bye -bye. that was Vincent Mendoza, our guest, our 11th guest for our episode, Let's Talk Magic. For those who just stayed, taraming, maraming salamat po. thank you very much for staying up late. And once again, uh, before I end the broadcast, I would like to once again... Uh, do the pluggings of uh, Magfi and IMC in Wanlu once again this coming uh, May 3. Ju Yong Lee Magic Lecture that this will be coming Monday. Uh, if you want to uh, join this lecture for a minimal fee of 100 pesos, you can watch JL uh, Magic Lecture. And aside from that, the following week, the following week, the following week, May 10, Close Up Magic Competition, Online Edition, the Magicians Foundation Incorporated. So, um, Please get in touch with the numbers if you want to know more about the competition. And another one from Magfi. It is Magfi's 31st anniversary show. Talk about Magfi in celebration of Magfi's 31st anniversary show. It's an online show on Facebook Live again, May 17. And finally, another project of Magfi. It's Magfi's 31st anniversary online show. May 24, 2021, 9 p.m. All, all will be happening at the official Magfi Facebook page. Babakil pa rin. Oh, may isa pa pala. Another online lecture. May 31, Magic Mike Applegate will be lecturing for Magfi IBM Ring 322 this coming May 31st. Again, lahat po, all the Mondays, all the Mondays of, for the month of May is uh, activity day for Magfi since it's Magfi's anniversary month. So Magfi celebrating their 31st anniversary this month. And of course, my good friend, Wandu or Wandu, Wandu na lang. Okay. Special edition, maybe the old songs with Nicolo. You can uh, watch this at Juan Lu's official Facebook page, Juan Lu Lunaria or Juan Lu and his puppets. And this will be free tomorrow at 10 a.m. And another event from Juan Lu will be on 8th of May. That's the next Saturday at 10 a.m. as well. It's called One Big Heart. It is a benefit, and it's a benefit show. If you want to know more, I think there's a minimal fee for attending. Please uh Go to one's official page, one Lu and his puppets, or one Lu Lunaria. And finally, our good friends from Inner Magic Club, James Cuevas. Thank you very much. IMC Exclusives presents the Jeff Evans Lecture, May 12, 2021, 9 p.m. Exclusive for IMC members. So once again, guys, thank you very much for watching Let's Talk Magic. Again, our presenters are the following. Philippine Magic Scene for the latest news and updates of Philippine Magic. Don't forget to visit and like their Facebook page, Philippine Magic Scene. Up next, we have Lasco Home Security and Automation. We make high-quality automation affordable for every Filipino. You can visit their Lazada page. And of course, they will be having an upcoming 5 and 5 sale at Lazada. So once again, Lasco. 
For the best mommy and shop of combo in Metro Manila, Mamon Look Restaurant serving the Filipino cravings since 1920. You can visit their store at 480 Quezon Avenue, Quezon City, and they are available via your favorite delivery apps. Apps, apps, apps. The Prestigitator is the movers of Philippine magic. Check out their website, www.theprestigitators.com, and Facebook page, The Prestigitators. And finally, we have. DB Magic Shop, serving the needs of professional magicians and hobbies. You can visit and uh, check out their Lazada and Shopee pages for the latest magic uh, out there. So once again, DB Magic Shop. <clears throat> so once again, my name is Chubster. Thank you very much for watching Let's Talk Magic. This is episode number 11. Join me next week because next week, Allied, uh, Allied Art of Magic will be having some ventriloquists to join me on this uh, on the episode i'll be having oni carcamo luther Urquia, and of course wandu lunario so once again there will be my guest next week let's talk magic thank you very much guys good night and god bless chubs are here maraming maraming salamat po wait let me just uh uh yeah no thanks uh, mr mendoza and yeah and bago ko magano cut na okay guys Maraming salamat sa inyo lahat. Thank you very much for watching. Let's talk magic. Thank you guys. See you next week. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Wait, wait. Sorry, my problem. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I was just uh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Okay, wait. May humabol eh. Pumalak pa kasi si JP eh. So, VIP uh, to sa akin si JP eh. And, uh, of course, si uh, uh, Monya. Okay. By the way, guys, i ano ko lang. I'll just have to plug this one. Uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to, wait, I have to wear my binoculars for this one. Ano ba yan? Yeah, okay. Here we go. Uh, guys, I'll be putting a link over here. Maybe, I don't know if you can uh, punch it in or type it in. I don't know. How shall I do this? Yeah. This is uh, the link for the string theory as uh, performed by our good friend, Mr. Vincent Mendoza. So let me just uh, put it over here. So I don't know if you can uh, type it or uh, click it. I don't know if you're going to go click it, if it's going to wait. Let me check. If I click it, no, the thing is, ah, sorry. Yeah, maybe, wait lang. Huh? Let me see if I can go in, go uh, uh, to my Facebook page, String Theory. I'll just type in String Theory. Let's see if it will appear. Uh, string, sorry, Theory. Ano ba yan? Wrong spelling pa. Hold on. Is it, is it there? Is it, let me see if I can... Uh, Official Facebook page. Wait, 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 wait. Wait lang, huh? I can't, I can't. Now, let me see if I can just click that link. Sorry, guys. Sorry. I was about to end the broadcast. Yes, yes, yes. Hold on, hold on. Can I uh, bring Can I bring you back for a while? Is it okay, Vincent? If I can, I bring you back? Okay. Sorry about that, guys. See me. There you go. Yeah, sorry. Uh, hey, guys. Here, okay, let me share screen. Share screen. Okay, are you there? Window. Is it there? Nope. Nope. Cancel. Okay, now I can't hear you. Hindi ko lang kung anong nangyari. Nawala. Oops. Sorry, Chubster. I can't hear you now.
Sí, sí. No. No. Sorry, Chubb, sir. I, can I? Are you there? Stop screen. I don't, I don't, yeah. Now I can't hear you. I lost. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Vince, can you hear me? Now I can hear you. Okay. The thing is, there's no audio coming over from the video. Oh, okay. Let me see. It, it's not. It's not on mute. Eh? I mean, it's full. Ah. 
Uh, who's this guy performing again? It's uh, his name is uh, Reginald. They 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 did it on French TV. They asked me for permission to do it. Watch oh, this restoration. They asked permission, huh? Yeah. Watch the restoration. Wow. So that's called st string theory. Yeah. You know what? I should have downloaded that video. Ay, 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 my bad. Sorry about that. That's okay. It's available off Murphy's Magic. Am I correct? Murphy's, yeah. Actually, it's available pretty much anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. The Express George, uh, sorry about that. I don't know why there is no audio. But uh, anyway, guys, again, uh, thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, you had the uh, string theory by uh, Vincent, even though there's no audio in the video. But anyway, again, Vincent, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, pasensya na na. Huli ko na nakita nung nag PM ka sa akin. Sorry about that. Okay. So once again, guys, uh, this is Let's Talk Magic. My name is Chubb Surrogate. My good friend Vincent Mendoza saying good morning. And uh, <laughs> good morning here in Manila. Magandang tanghali in the uh, U.S. Again, Chubster and Vincent, let's talk magic. Thank you very much, guys. Salamat. Yeah.